needs were unmet. Thank you. Did everyone have that issue? Okay, was the biggest issue wanting everything to fit neatly in a box? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so it's not an issue. Things do not fit neatly in a box, especially when we're dealing with the mind. Where's the mind located? In the middle of your brain. No, it's everywhere. You know what you reminded me? Head and shoulders, yeah. knees and toes, knees and toes. Okay, so James thinks that it's in this area. Where do you think the mind is located? Everywhere. everywhere. What else? I think it's in the middle of your brain. In the middle of the brain. In your pituitary gland. Which mine is fucked up, but... Okay. Yeah. So, we want to localize the mind. Put it in this place. Does the mind exist here? Yes. Yeah. How come? Because everything is connected. Right, but if I have a cell here, isn't it connected? Yeah. Yes. Everywhere. The mind is everywhere. One of the beautiful things about Ayurveda is that they have a word for the mind an actual channel for the mind. It's called maha, mana vahastrota. And it means the channel of the mind. You said that. I have? Yes. Oh, I don't Heard remember say saying that. that. Mana vahastrota. And it's a very typical question, where is the mind located? Most people want to think that it's the brain. But the brain connects to every cell. And every cell has memory. And every cell talks to every other cell. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the mind is located everywhere. So this idea of neat boxes, when we're talking about the mind, doesn't exist. So tell me, on your paper, what part of the brain and what unmet need for each of these vices. Pride. Limbic. Limbic, I agree. And what safe, what unmet need? That was easy. No. No. Pride. pride is a super easy one. What unmet need is pride? Power. That's not an unmet need. Do you remember the four unmet needs? That's not an unmet need. I give up. There's a handout. There's a handout. This should slip off your tongue. We don't have any yellow here who spits them out. Come on now. You said one of them. Safety, security, protection. Thank you, Jennifer. What else? Love. Love is four and three. I always forget that. Validation. That's the most important one. Validation. For Validation. This will pop you the back. <laughs> so, which is the unmet need for pride? Validation. Validation, obviously. Obviously. Okay, deceit. Love. Well, what's the brain? Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah. Real? No, the emotion one. one. Which one's the emotion one? No, no, I'm not saying you're wrong. I just want to hear your rationale. I don't know. I've never done this activity before. Oh, I don't know. I think it's emotion, the limbic yeah, system. My personal opinion. It also could be reptilian, don't you think? Yes. Survival. For survival? I think so too. And what about unmet need? Love, I agree. I think deceit and love. It could also be validation. Envy. That's just like pride. I feel like it's the same you think envy is safety and security? I think people envy, like, envy, like, because they're fearful, fearful of the things that they are, are not, or are, are not meeting themselves. Like, it's, it's like a mirror effect of what they're not. Okay, but I think you're speaking from personal experience. I think what you're referring to is your own youth where you didn't have the safety, security, and protection, but don't people envy when you're at the top of, you know, have a nicer car, or you yeah. have the corner office. Yeah. So it's not only 
that. It could be any of, envy could be more global. So what um, part of the brain? The limbic, the limbic system. And what about the unmet need? Validation. Validation, absolutely. There might be some overlap to love. Yeah, you know how they say there's a fine line between love and hate? Mm -hmm. It could be a little bit like that. Avarice. That's Avarice is like greed. Greed or wealth? Well, you could be greedy in other ways, not just wealth, but that's the most common that we think of. We want more and more like a hoarding. Mm -hmm. So what is that? I don't think so. Or like analytic. What would, oh, I'm sorry, Tanisha, I was thinking of the needs. I wasn't thinking of the brain. What need, what unmet need? Um, protection. Protection, that's what I was thinking you were referring to. Um, and I do agree that it is the reptilian brain. But protection, remember that protection has to do with worth, with wealth, with the second house of Taurus, with um, name your price, name your place, things like that. So the more that we, the more that we acquire, the more wealthy and the more validated we also feel. Yes. Sorry to interrupt. Just wanted to let you know that we have a fabulous job fair taking place today. We have over 25 employers that are physically here. So please, when you guys are on your break, come and network with them because they're very excited to meet with you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, so avarice, yes, I believe, I agree protection, and I agree with Tanisha of the reptilian. It could also be neocortex, though, because greed is more of a human sort of thing. Anyone know the story of manna in the Bible? Okay, so when the Jews were coming out of the exodus from Egypt, they were in the desert for 40 years and God would throw food down from the heavens like this bread crackery type thing called manna and God would say take what you need don't take more don't take less it's like the Goldilocks story just right take what you need for yourself and your family but some people became very greedy and they took more and I'm sure that the devil of the, the God of the Old Testament was very angry that he struck them down or something. I don't know. But that's a neocortex thing. That's more of an evolved animal thing because the instinct of the animals, they know when they're full and they stop. So really it's a neocortex thing. The hoarding part. Fear. I agree with reptilian. I see it with my dog. Okay, so my dog is this little, and today I took him out to walk. There's like this little stack of leaves, and he goes. Okay. It's testing, and there's fear, and he's smelling, and he's using all of his sensory organs to see if it's safe. And we have a similar sort of mechanism. We don't always use it, especially when we're on our cell phones. We don't find where the pit is or the danger, you know. But for the most part, where the reptilian brain is that one that like lifts up, or the little hairs in the back of our, of our neck lift up because we're, you know, fight or flight response. What unmet need is fear? Safety, security. You have to understand that the reptilian brain, fight or flight, safety and security are always together. So people that are fearful, anyone really fearful here? Yeah. What are you afraid of? Failure. Okay, but is that something that you notice is excessive? Okay. 
So that comes from some childhood belief system, some judgment or value system, where you weren't enough, or someone was more than you, or comparison that you were compared to. So people that have a very strong fear factor, they tend to have difficulty sleeping, they're in fight or flight, maybe difficult with digestion, because the dige rest and digest is the opposite nervous system that's used. So you're, if you're in a constant fight or flight. Now, did you say your hair was falling out? Yeah. OK, because that's a very common fight or flight response to from the physical, the stress of. So all of those things, and maybe the epilepsy, not knowing when you're going to get an episode, that's got to keep you sort of in fight or flight. So fear, very important. Gluttony. Who knew, raise your hand, if you knew that the opposite of gluttony was sobriety? Well, yeah. That, you knew yeah. that? That never, ever, ever dawned on me until last year when I read this. This comes out of a Wikipedia page. They did a really nice job of the synopsis of these books. When I read that, that made so much sense because I attract men that drink. I attract, alcohol, I attract alcoholic partners. And gluttony has been an issue of mine my whole life. And all of a sudden, I saw the mirror. And prior to seeing this, I mean, I had an idea of what the mirror was. I thought it was because sobriety on the astrological scale falls in with the planet Neptune. Neptune is addictions, and Neptune is delusion. And I'm exceptionally delusional, so of course, those that aren't sober are also delusional. When I read this, I had such an aha moment I was like blown away, blown away, because I'm extremely gluttonous. So I'm like, oh my God, no wonder I attract these people that are either in sobriety or they're, you know, not. So to me, it was like some new thing that I was like, that makes so much sense. So even from a mirroring perspective, you could see why certain people in your life and why they're mirroring or what you're trying to, to eradicate, what beast of yours you're trying to eliminate by looking at the virtue. So what's gluttony and, and, um, as the vice? What unmet need and what part of the brain? No, we just use the example of the mana, the neocortex. Gluttony, like avarice, is more human in terms of needing more, collecting, you know, it's going to identify my power, my wealth. Just think of, think of all of the, the monuments around the United States. What are they? They're erections, they're penises. My penis is bigger than yours. And then they'll put like a little one inch little spire so that that tower is tallest of all of the ones in the city. Because it's a pissing contest. It's, a, it's an erection contest. So that's a man, man thing, a, a human being thing. And think of um, anyone familiar with the artist Botero? He's the one that makes the fat women. Oh, yeah. Everyone's fat. Why is everyone fat? And why was that a symbol of beauty? It means they're eating good. They're eating meat primarily. In India, there's four levels to the caste system. The only ones that can eat milk and meat are the Brahmins, the highest caste. <clears throat> so that's a symbol of gluttony is a symbol of wealth, of abundance is another word. And in Africa too, right? In Africa, and like I only know this Africa. because of Oprah. Oprah. Um, <laughs> you know how Oprah's always struggled with her weight? 
one day listening to her satellite radio, she starts singing, there's a place for us. And she says that it's some village or some place in Africa where they fatten up the wives before they get married. And she was singing like, there's a place for us. And I know that because of that. I don't know if it's all over the place. Like some parts of Africa. Yeah. So that girth, is viewed as beautiful, it's viewed as wealthy, it's used, viewed as healthy, because if you're thinking from a reptilian standpoint, oftentimes animals will find the largest because they're gonna be able to be around, they're gonna be stronger, they're gonna be able to carry more children. So that's how we see it in nature. But really it's much more of a neocortex and, a, and an abundance thing. And what about the need? Validation, absolutely. If I've got the newest car, if I've got the newest watch, if I've got the newest iPhones, then I'm of worth. Lust. Lust. I said reptilian. I would say reptilian because sex is an animal. Remember, the three things that make up reptilian brain. Breath, respiration, digestion, and reproduction. So anything that a client has that has to do with digestion, reproduction, or respiration is a fight or flight and a survival need. In this particular case, lust is love because we're not we're not animals in the sense. What we're looking for is love. It goes back to the pandemic love and the Uranian love, or the Eros and the Agape. We want love and sometimes we only think it's through sex that we can get it. And what about sloth? You pick sloth, Marsha? Okay, what about it? Which brain and which unmet need? Hello, doctora. Hello. 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 I think of that one as like uh, the neocortex. Neocortex, absolutely. Neocortex. And what about the unmet need? I don't think it's validation. Safety and security and protection. And protection. You have to remember, if we look at nature, they don't go out unless they have a protective shield, like a turtle or, you know, a crab. That protective shield, so if we look at the evolution of the animal, they first have to digest, they have to breathe, they have respiration, and they have to um, have some sort of reproduction. That's the first level. Then they go out and they create un cacaron, a shell, where they're protected. Then they will actually move forward to seek validation and, and connection with other species. So if we just think of it from a uh, biological or an animal sort of, you know, um, evolutionary standpoint, we realize that sloth is part of just being protected, okay? So that's how we want to start thinking of the function of how the client or the brain or the unmet need, why the client is doing what they're doing or choosing what they're choosing, okay? So, you have your vice and your virtue. Anger, serenity, pride, humility. Who has a problem with humility? <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> yep, we do. We're human beings. We have problems with humility. Where does that come from? Insecurity. Insecurity, but why do we have a problem with humility from the moment we are conceived. Because God is in us. Because what? Because God is in us. Okay, in part because God is in us, yes. Where's our little philosopher's stone? 
So we think we're God. And I told you, in the Indian or in the Eastern philosophies, that is okay. They are brought up understanding that that spark of light, okay, that jivatman is what they call it, is in them. We grew up in Western religions. It is sacrilegious to say God is in you. God is in heaven. God is on a cross. God is not in you. We have difficulty with that because it's contradicting what we learn, but yet we understand that we have a God spark in us. So we struggle. Eastern philosophy, people born on the other side of the globe, they don't have that. They don't find that sacrilegious to say. They have namaste as a greeting because they're honoring the light or the God in you as you're honoring in yourself and in them. So very true. What else? What happens at the moment of conception that would make you not humble? Okay, the ego's developed. The ego's developed later on. Okay, so. Okay, what happens in in the subconscious? What did your parents say that was your purpose on earth? To fulfill their needs. That gives you a God complex. If you are responsible for fulfilling your parents' needs, you are responsible for how they feel because you bring good grades. If you're responsible for making them happy because you sleep through the night, hell, you're freaking God! There's no humility! You got the whole answer! So we have difficulty with humility, and that is why where you fail to be humble you will get hit and you will end up on your knees. Mm -hmm. They're gonna hit it where it hurts, right here. In astrology, it is Saturn. This H looking guy is Saturn by house and by sign. And you're gonna see that when we do your charts. You have the list of all the birthdays? Yes. See, get it from your information. I'm going to print out the charts and laminate them okay. so you can follow along. Okay. Truthfulness and authenticity. Well, I'm just saying, who has issues with truthfulness and authenticity? Um, who? I do. We all do. We all have issues with truthfulness and authenticity. Why? It's on the board. Why? Okay, the fragments that were fragmented beings. So yes, the archetypes are another way. We're little pieces of shells. We're not whole. We're not a nice, whole, beautiful shell. And therefore, depending on the situation we're in, who we're with, mother or father, we, pick up, we put on the mask that we sit fit for this. And this keeps us from our authentic selves. Why do we not live with our authentic selves, people? What are we afraid of? What are we afraid of? If we... Okay, we're afraid of showing our true selves, but why? Why are we fragmented? Why do we wear masks? Because it's more socially acceptable. Okay, we could definitely, it could definitely be because it's more socially acceptable and we can't really say, well, I'm God and yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> sorry, not sorry, um, because everyone is God. So yeah, social acceptable. Why else don't we show our truthfulness and our authentic selves? Is it um, like, I guess fear of rejection? Okay, fear of rejection, that can absolutely be what? One of them. Why else? Are we authentic? No. No, from the moment of conception. 
From the moment that we leave, people, you have to learn this diagram. Denisha, it's a handout. Chaos structure. Uranus was castrated Saturn. What is this called? Chaos. Chaos and structure creates what? What? Yes, human being castrated. Uranus was castrated from his sexual organ. You came through a flawed individual. You don't know how to be authentic. You must die and reborn in order to find your authentic nature, and that's if you allow it. Most people, like Tanisha, will not go to the seven gates, and that's okay. Awareness is what you do. That is why it is so impossible to be truthful and authentic. So is deceit or lying, does anyone remember? What planet is next to the sun? Mercury. Mercury, and what does he represent? Communication. Lie, cheat, and steal. Communication also, but in this example. And what, um, what happens when we have Mercury next to the sun? The sun represents what? Our authentic self. Mercury represents our fault <coughs> self. So if every single human being has Mercury, we all have a trickster. Do you remember that two minutes after being born, he walked backwards and he stole the cows? Yeah. He was trying to trick. We all have that. It is very difficult, very, very difficult to become our authentic self because we have deceit or lying, cheating, and stealing. We're perpetrators just like we're victims. This is super important message that you need to learn. I say it over and over and over. It is practically impossible to be authentic because it doesn't work in our favor based on what we know about the subconscious, the way we live in society. It takes a lot of work and a lot of humility. And that's why you see people in situations that they're in. Not because they want to be, but because they've had to survive. And from the moment of conception, you're being told, your needs don't matter, my needs matter, become your parents' subconscious mind, forget what your mind tells you, have your Costco card, and so you live with your Costco card and you never, ever, ever go down the seven gates, the, ver the vices, or that's the addiction. Or the passions, or the reboots, or the sins. These are the same thing as the seven gates. We don't want to heal them because that would mean a lot of pain. That would mean getting down to the underworld, Tanisha, and being killed. And Tanisha does not like that. Plus, she likes her cute little outfits, and she does not want to give them to anybody as they knock on the door, nice. as she goes down the gates. And that's absolutely okay. But then we understand why humanity is the way humanity, the condition humanity is in. If you don't do the work, your authentic self stays opaque. It stays stuck in the bottom of the ocean. And all you're wearing is masks. So whomever it is that you're talking to, and you switch them on so fast. Anyone ever go to the theater? Yes. You go to the theater, and the people are acting, and then they run to the back, and they change, and they're in another outfit. That's what we're doing constantly. That's why Shakespeare said, all of life's a stage. All we're doing is going back there, changing our costume, depending on who it is. We're going on a date. We have to go to school. We have to this. We have to that. Right now, there's a job fair. You go down there, none of you guys aren't dressed, you're not dressed <laughs> in, in attire, um, but you're supposedly supposed to be dressed professionally, 
And that's why, so that you can meet people job fair. You're not gonna show up in ripped shorts, right? To a job fair. Because it's just a mask. And then once you get comfortable at a job, what happens? Everyone goes out and gets trashed at Friday night happy hour. <laughs> because you already got the job. Funny story. This lady, I don't know her name, but she's a famous, famous woman. She's written for, I don't know, many, many magazines. And she was on public radio the other day. And um, at the time when she was trying to break into a man's business, you know, the media and stuff didn't hire women. So she was interview being interviewed because she decided to retire. I guess she wrote her last book or something. 